Welcome back everyone to Wes Explains Best. Today we're going to be doing a CUDA software worksheet tutorial on solving quadratic equations by completing the square. You might see this as early as algebra, algebra 2, or as in this case, this is a senior level algebra course. So let's go ahead and begin with number 1. Here we have p squared plus 14p minus 38. The temptation here is to try to get this into factor form like this, but there's another uh, way to do these types of problems, and that is to complete the square. The first step for completing the square, let me go ahead and get this uh, off to the side. So step one is to get it into the form where you have x squared plus bx, and then it's equal to c. So you want the numerical um, constant uh, by itself on one side of the equal sign. So right now that's not the case here. We have this negative 38 still on the same side as the squared term, the variable squared term. And we don't want that, so we're going to add 38 to both sides. Once we get that, we get p squared plus 14p. I'm purposely leaving some space before the equal sign. And then I'll write positive 38. Now, why did I leave that space? Well, now we are going to complete the square. So I'm going to be adding something to both sides. Remember, what you add to one side, you also have to add to the other side. So why, uh, why am I doing this and what am I going to add? Well, if you look at a perfect square trinomial, for example, let's do x plus 3 squared. This is the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3. What happens when you FOIL this out or multiply? You get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now, this is a perfect square trinomial. Why? Well, because we can factor it into a perfect square binomial, as you see here. That's why it's a perfect square trinomial. One thing you should notice, or multiple things you should notice, first, this 3 is exactly half of the coefficient of the middle term. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind, that this 3 is exactly half of this term. Also keep in mind that this 9 is the same thing as half of 6 squared. So the general form for a perfect square trinomial is you take the coefficient of the middle term, you divide it by 2, and then you square it. This will give you a perfect square trinomial. Trinomial. Okay, this is the general form. Using this, we need to figure out what we need to add to each side. Well, if we want this to be a perfect square trinomial, then we need to figure out what this green should be. What's the form? Well, we do 14 divided by 2, and then we square it. Now, what does that equal? Well, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49, so we are going to be adding 49 to both sides. I know the, the left side equal sign looks a little funny right now, um, but we're going to simplify it in just a second. Okay, once we do that, we get p squared plus 14p plus, uh, sorry, 49, and now we are at 38 plus 49, and we get 87. Once we get here, the whole point, the whole reason why we did this is so we could do this. We could factor it just like this. Okay, and this is an unnecessary step, but I just wanted to show you this so you can see that essentially what we're doing is we're trying to get it so we can leave this, square, uh, this term squared right here, completing this square and then we should end up with something like this. If you're not ending up with something in parentheses squared equals uh, some number, then you're doing something wrong. Now, this is helpful because now we can just simply take the square root of both sides, and that undoes the exponent here. So we're left with x plus seven on the left, and now we have plus or minus the square root of 87. Now, 87 is divisible by 3. I'm, when this might be able to be factored a little bit further. No. The factors of 87 are 3 and 29, and 29 is prime, so therefore 87 cannot be broken down any further. We're still not done. The x is not by itself, so we need to subtract 7 from both sides. So we get x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 87. So we have two answers. One is negative 7 plus plus radical 87, 
and the other answer is negative 7 minus radical 87. Personally, I'm okay as a teacher with this answer. I like that. It's nice and neat. But any three of these are good. Let me get that x in there. And that's how you complete the square. Let's do another example. Okay, let's do number two. Might as well. We're going to try to complete the square. Oh, I didn't write step two. I'm sorry. Step two. Complete square. Okay, and we're going to add to both sides. Then we factor. Then we simplify or solve. We should put solve. Okay, step four. So you guys can reference this. You can pause it, take notes, pause it now, take some notes. Okay, we're going on to number two. So I'm going to rewrite this. We have v squared plus 6v. I'm going to move this 59 over first. So I have plus something equals 59 plus something. I like putting these blanks. It's kind of like my template that I use. Okay, now I'm going to do 6 divided by 2 squared. I'm adding that to both sides. That's 9. So I'm adding 9 to both sides. Once I have that, how do I know what to put in this parentheses? Well, what I'm going to do is essentially I just look at this middle term. I divide it by 2, and that's what's going to go here. So it becomes a positive 3, and this is going to be squared. I completed the square here, and this equals 68. Now I'm ready to solve, so I take the square root of both sides. I get v, whoops, not an x, v plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 68. Okay, and this one we can simplify further. So if you guys want to watch videos on simplifying radicals, that would be recommended. Otherwise, you can do a quick tutorial here. We have two twos, so one comes out, 17 stays home alone. So this becomes 2 radical 17. So we have v plus 3 equals plus or minus 2 radical 17. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides to solve for x. I put the negative 3 in front of the plus or minus. So now I have v equals negative 3 plus or minus 2 radical 17. And there's my answer. Okay, let's look for maybe a tougher example to do. As you can see, number 12 is already in the form. So we can do this one pretty quickly. We're going to have b squared plus 2b plus something equals negative 20 plus something. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So we're adding 1 to both sides, and it's going to be b plus 1 squared equals negative 19. Take the square root. Take the square root. We get b plus 1 equals plus... Ooh, now we have a negative number. So this one's interesting. So we have a negative number inside, so we have plus or minus the square root of negative 19. I'm going to subtract 1, and I'll show you what we do at the very end. So we have negative 1 plus or minus radical negative 19. Because this is a negative number inside the radical, we need to get that negative out by using imaginary numbers. So this is going to become b equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 19 which is also equal to a negative 1 plus or minus i radical 19. So make sure you account for that negative by including, oops, by including this i. That negative uh, inside the radical always is going to ha have an imaginary result. So there's our answer there. Some of these other ones you just need to do a little bit more manipulation. Um, something to keep in mind, if there is a coefficient in front of this x squared term, you need to get rid of it. So we'll go ahead and do 16, and then we'll call it a day. So with 16, it's already, well, we have some problems. First, we need to get this 12x over as the same side as x squared. So we have 6x squared plus 12x. And we need to get this negative 48 over, so we're going to add 48 to both sides. So we equals 48. Here's the problem. We can't have this 6 there, so we need to divide everything by 6 to get rid of it plus uh, 6x, no, that's 2x, isn't it? It is. 2x equals 48 divided by 6 is 8. Okay, now we're ready to go. Okay, this is what it really should be. So now we're going to get our template set up, x squared plus 2x plus something equals 8 plus that same something. Well, that's going to be 1. That's how we complete the square there. So then it becomes x plus 1 
squared equals nine. This one's actually gonna turn out really well. We get x plus one equals plus or minus three. So then we have two answers. We have one plus three or one minus three. So we have four or uh, negative two. Those are our two answers for x. That one ended up being a little bit more neat. But again, you need to make sure that coefficient, I'll put that up here in my reminder section, coefficient of x squared must be one for completing the square, okay? Hopefully this gives you a little bit uh, more information and a little bit more strategy and how to approach these problems. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll, I hope to see you next time on West Explains Best. Take care.